Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Dan. And today I'm reviewing another kaiju film for you folks. That kaiju film is most specifically it's gonna be the American version of a movie. Um yeah, it's the one titled Godzilla Raids Again. That long ago the Japanese and the American version were released in the same disc in a special collection. Like this one, for example, folks. So that is actually out. So you can find that online or in stores, along with this edition as well. So this one as well, like the one I just showed you, does contain both the American and the Japanese version. So you have to pick which one you want to watch if you want. But I'm mostly going to be referring to the VHS tape version because that's the one I actually watched. I never watched this film on DVD, just so you know. So. Throughout the entire movie review, I'm be referring to this. Or sometimes it's referred to as Gigantens, the fire breathing monster. Which sounds totally different from the original title, but that was kind of the idea. Because of the fact that at the time of this release of this version, the people who bought the rights and trying to you know show it off to the American audiences. We're trying to basically disguise the fact that this was not a Godzilla film, even though it really is a Godzilla film, but they're trying to disguise it as something else. And to some degree, it worked because people are fucking stupid, I guess you can say. So, anyway, yeah, I already know where this is going. Ugh. Anyway, folks, as always, I do have to talk about the plot. And so, just so you know, it is on my to-do list, folks. It is on my damn to-do list. Anyway, folks, yeah, for this movie, it basically picks up right after the... Well, yeah, in this version, it, it gets kind of, sort of, pick up after the events of the... the Godzilla, the, the original Godzilla film. But, the thing is, if you... It kind of, it, it, like I said, they were trying to disguise this as a different movie altogether. So, it's not really a sequel to the American version of the first Godzilla film. So, it kind of, with this version, it's trying to come off like it's, it's its own thing to some degree. Kind of. But, anyway, we get to see that in this movie, that there, there are these two pilots. And... Yeah, we get to see that there's this pilot, folks, and he sees a friend that's pretty much in distress, so to speak. The thing is that he does get a distress signal from a friend who, you know, was supposed to be put on an island or whatever. He gets stranded there. But that's the thing, folks. Basically, these two individuals saw the two giant monsters fighting each other, and they're actually shocked that Godzilla has returned. Why would they even be shocked? I uh, well, you know what, who gives a shit? Let's just, you know, move along. They quickly see that, you know, Godzilla, I mean, <coughs> I mean excuse me, Gigantis, is fighting another monster. And this other monster is Anguirus. And of course, you can basically predict what's going to happen next. I can guess, folks. These two giant monsters, you know, duke it out for a hot second here, folks. It's really brief, and he did just fight for a brief second here. And people are just falling into the water for a good minute here, folks. These two giant creatures duke it out. They fight each other, of course. And, yeah, it's honest. All hell breaks loose, so to speak. So the, the plot itself trying to, tries to focus on how to defeat these creatures. Film was double billed as a drive in along with the film Teenage Earth from Outer Space. So, because Godzilla, I mean, Gigantis is running muck. And the story from here and there does, you know, you know, speak about with the, uh, this pilot or whatever. Yeah, this, this pilot, of course, we're trying to fight, well, of course, do it an intent to fight off Godzilla, of course. So. You know, like, later, not like, like, later on in the film, towards the end of the film, but, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to go spoilery. I'm not going to spoil anything, really, but that's basically the premise of the film. This film does open with footage that will happen later on in the film, 
and uses it as the opening sequence. As to why did this, I don't know. This makes no sense. This entire movie is stupid. It's just really stupid. It's so mismatched. What the hell? So the footage in this film just comes off. It was placed all over the place. So there's no coherency, really. It doesn't seem like it. It's like me throwing a bunch of puzzle pieces, a part of a large puzzle, and just not really giving a shit on how to put everything together and just be a huge mismatch. That's this movie, folks. Where, you know, everything, everything seems chaotic in some ways or whatever. And we all know that these two giant monsters, Godzilla and Aguirre's, are going to eventually duke it out with each other. Sooner or later in this film, that's kind of like the main attraction of this film. Two giant monsters just beating the shit out of each other. So, you know, there's that. But here's the problem. Like I said, this is the American version of this film. And, and, and just like the other Godzilla film, this one has been heavily re-edited. And of course, that's a bad idea. So, yeah, there's some stuff I have to say that is stupid. I don't, I don't think this was really re-edited. And one thing is that, yeah, the, this has some of the worst pacing I've seen in a Godzilla film. It's, it's all jumbled up, really. And, and it doesn't help that there was stock footage. They actually used stock footage from educational movies. These educational movies, I don't know what they are exactly, but you can tell they're like, you know, there's, um, I know many people out there, I know many people out there have seen educational films from maybe like your middle school age. And, yeah, I'm sure people out there, people who are watching this video, I'm, poor, I'm pretty sure a lot of you remember a lot of these educational videos when you're like, what, maybe in middle school age. And, and that's what the footage comes off. It came, a lot of the footage comes off like it's from like some sort of educational thing from the middle school age. And they just put in this movie. So it's basically stock footage from that. So which makes this movie seem even cheaper than it really is. And, and, then, and then at the same time there's some stock footage from other resources. I don't know well from some, other, some maybe some other videos I don't know or maybe movies I don't know but there's some stock footage from all the resources where they just planted in this movie so again it's just stock footage and stock footage in this movie which again makes it seem more cheaper than it really is so they're trying to uh, explain away some things like with, with, with the character of Godzilla like, like I said before, folks, they would try to disguise the fact that this is not a Godzilla movie. Yet they have footage from the original Godzilla film. But they, they're trying to disguise it like it's not. What the fuck? And, and of course, the character from um, the American version of the other Godzilla film I reviewed, Raymond, you know, Raymond Bart's character, whom is uh, named uh, Steve Martin. Whom later was renamed as Mr. M because there was a comedian called Steve Morton. But anyway, his character doesn't show up in here. His character does not show up in here at all. Not even referenced to him, not even mentioned in any kind of way. So, where the hell is he? I don't know. But, yeah, like a, like a lot of this makes any sense anyway. So, <clears throat> me ask questions? Bad me. But anyway, folks. Another plot I have this film, and I didn't mean a, a lot of plot, is that like I, regarding the stock footage I was mentioning a moment ago, is that this one, there was one bit of footage where it just comes off like they were trying to. It's the way the, the, the uh, how do I say it? It's the way they were depicting the Japanese, so to speak. Because I didn't like how they were doing that. Because they were acting as if that the Japanese live in a country that's it's all backwards all they do all day is just go on this farm you know this farm uh rice farms so to speak they all live on these rice farms and whatever they do is poor it's not nearly near as advanced as maybe other areas in the world where it's that's an incredibly racist movie that's it that is incredibly racist no that's no that's an incredibly racist movie 
So you have to recognize that in, again, this is just, just the American version. Okay, just keep that in mind. I'm reviewing not the actual original version, but they're acting as if the Japanese are just a bunch of poor folk who don't know better. They're not as educated, and if they are educated, it's not you know nearly as much as they should be. Again, that's racist. So, oh boy, this this is not a good movie. It really isn't. Uh. Anyway, so folks, anyway, I say I don't recommend this film at all. I don't recommend it at all. And you have some of the worst editing. The, the editing here is, is atrocious. The editing is really bad. Okay, it's probably because of stock footage, but... And not just that, just some of the footage that was actually used from the original film came out really choppy. It, you have so much footage, it comes out like, it was like, um, like you're making a sandwich. Imagine you're saying, making a sandwich and you just put a, a, too much stuff in the sandwich itself and it just, you know, covers over. So, like a sandwich, is, uh, like a sandwich that's way too big, I just... That's how it comes out. The, the, the original footage is sandwiched between the so much stock footage in, in here, folks. And another major problem I have with this film is that... They got the sound effects wrong. You know, for Godzilla and Guerreras, you know, the the way Godzilla roars goes to Guerreras, and the way Guerreras would roar goes to Godzilla. You get to go back and forth, back and forth. They got the all the that all the sound effects wrong. Oh boy, it's a, it's a, it, it comes off unintentionally funny. And Guerreras sounds like Godzilla, and Godzilla sounds like Guerreras, but then it keeps going back and forth to the original roars, and then it does a switch rule. Back and forth the entire film is comes off hilarious unintentionally, but it comes off rather hilarious in some ways. And it just this this is just bad. It's just horrendously bad. Really stupid movie. Ugh. Man, it, there's, there's so much wrong with the film, folks. I, I just didn't like it at all. I really I know it comes off like I'm, I'm just ranting all this. This is what this basically this video is. Just me ranting about shit. Get a review. Oh, I haven't done a review. How much? What's going to happen here? Oh, it looks like it looks like, it looks like Air Force just gave me a um, three uh, like a grand and he to just continue his review. Oh, guess I guess I'll, he just give me one grand in this little pinky back thing. All right, I guess I'll go on then. So anyway, damn it all to hell! Here's Mr. Monkey's bitch ass, and he's listening to music. Yeah, there you go, you little primate bastard, little fucker. So I'm sneaking into my movie reviews. Now, hopefully Rick doesn't bring you back to life again. Hey, my name is Rick. Shit, it's Rick. My name is Rick. I don't give a fuck. Stop making fun of this movie. Are you gonna do something about it? It's a fantastic movie. Can you just realize how it, how classic it is? Come on, Killer Roy don't make fun of this movie. You should watch it. You should watch it because I like it. Just because I like it, therefore it's awesome. Hey Rocky, damn it, it's not safe here. This movie is terrible. The heavily re edited version is a pain in the ass. I don't like this. I don't like this movie. Save yourself. So go, get on, go and get Rocky. Ugh, damn it. I guess I'll talk to him later. Ugh, yeah, I, I really don't want to be here, folks. I want to end this video already. Because this movie's bad. Ah. Another issue I took with this version of this film is that the music itself. There's so much stock music that's been used from I don't know, from maybe somebody's maybe some town's library, maybe. I don't know. They must have got it from summer because there's so much stock music. That's been used for this film, and I mean it's it's already bad enough that a lot of the footage itself have been rearranged in some sort of ways, and to make it even worse is that the music they use stock music from like a I don't I don't know a library somewhere at the time, but it really doesn't help. It, really, it just feels like it just like, music never stops. It just comes out the music just keeps going and going and going and going. Throughout the film, folks, there is this narration that's being conducted here, folks, with this lengthy voiceover for some reason. And I think that's pretty stupid. 
I don't need to be told of what's going on right literally while it's going on. So yeah, there's this voice over that's doing that for some reason. Why do I need to be told everything as it occurs? I can visually see things occurring right in the screen, so that doesn't make any sense how to have the narrating narrating stuff as it occurs right then and there. That seems kind of stupid if you ask me. So yeah, folks. Not even that makes any sense at all. Ugh, man, this movie's awful. Sometimes when making a movie, sometimes you need moments of silence. You just need moments just to, you know, be calm. Whatever. You ain't gonna find that in this movie. Nope. And the dubbing. Oh, boy, the dubbing, the dubbing is, is some of the worst English dubbing I've seen in a movie. It's horrible. It has really bad dubbing, folks. Oh, boy. The dub is just wretched. And then... Mm. I'm, just, I'm just trying to digest all this, folks. Oi. Boy. So, yeah, folks. Yeah, the overall story doesn't make a whole lot of sense, really. And even even if you just want to look at the story itself, but just the bare basics, it's paper thin. I don't care what genre is this. I want a good story, damn it. So, the overall idea here, it feels like you just... Should, should, this film, this version shouldn't have been made at all. And, yeah, folks, another thing, the, um, the company, Toho, who was, I mean, who made the original version of this film, actually gave the, uh, the American company that made this version, the Godzilla suit and the Aguera suit, so they, they themselves can film additional fight scenes. Because, one of the versions they wanted to do, all the, all the footage that was going to include all the, you know, the human characters was going to be re removed and they just going to use brand new footage with American actors. So they were going to keep all the footage that had Godzilla and Aguirre's with additional footage of Godzilla and Aguirre's. So, but that version was never made. So we ended up with this huge hunk of shit. This abomination. So, will the other version they were planning to do be any better? I don't know, maybe not, and if it would be, maybe barely, but anyway folks, this, just no. Yeah, and by the way, this was actually released in theaters, folks. At the time, this was actually released in American theaters. Why, I don't know. The American version of the first Godzilla film didn't do that well, so what made them think it'd be a good idea to release this one in theaters at the time? I don't know. I'm gonna give it another shot, I guess. But, you know, it's not really connected to the first movie, aside from, you know, a bit of footage from the first film. Aside from that, not really. But, so anyway, folks, I don't recommend this. It's, it's, it's bad. So, it'll get an overall rating of a 3.9 out of 10. It gets a 3.9 out of 10 because this, this movie's horrendous. As always, thanks for watching and take care. Until next time, see ya. Yeah, you really fucked it up with this one. Why do you have to re-edit everything? You fucked it up. I need to see my therapist.